Motorhead are rock's most stubborn survivors. Formed in 1975, they were once one of Britain's biggest bands. Renowned for being amongst the heaviest drinking, drug fueled womanizers in the business, Motorhead made the Guinness Book of Records as the loudest band ever. In the early 80s, they blasted their way to the top of the charts with Ace of Spades. Almost 30 years on, Motorhead are still on the road, still playing loud and fast, and still as controversial as they've always been. Whatever. Fuck you, you know, politics. Fuck you, the new age. You know, fuck all of you. Motorhead are off on yet another UK tour. I'm glad to be leaving you, because it smells of shit and we never want to play it again. What a dump there. Playing the same music, wearing the same clothes and living rock and roll life to the full, can a band really survive without changing? Motorhead's lead singer Lemmy is one of rock's legends. He's now 57, only a few years away from getting a bus pass. Lemmy moved to LA 15 years ago. He now lives off Sunset Boulevard in an apartment crammed with Motorhead icons and an obsessive collection of Nazi memorabilia. He still gets through a bottle of bourbon a day and shows no sign of slowing down. Why do you think Motorhead's been around for so long? Because we didn't give up, you know, that's the basic thing of, like, surviving, not giving up, right? That's the only reason, you know, it isn't through, uh, you know, huge record success or anything like that, you know, because it's a long time since we heard that. I just think we're a good enough band to survive. We, I think you deserve us. <laughs> Buy in bulk, that's my advice. <laughs> How much do you drink a day? Oh, quite a bit. I must be the most drunk diabetic in the world. <laughs> Good evening! We're Motorhead, all right? And we play rock and roll. This will be Motorhead's 28th year of touring. Most 80s metal bands have disappeared without trace, but Lemmy, the only one left from the original lineup, has kept Motorhead going for almost 30 years. Motorhead is Lemmy, and Lemmy is Motorhead. Well, we're just rebelling for its own sake, you know, without any discernible goal, like, you know, which is what rock and roll started out as, you know, just like complaining and shouting and cursing and kicking and screaming, you know, basically, with no, not linked to any kind of politics, you know, because politics is the anathema of rock and roll, you know, it's the, the most opposite thing you could find. Uh, I mean, Motorhead's anarchy, if you like, if it's got any politics, that's what it is. The 2003 tour is a sellout, but it's more Wolverhampton Civic Hall than Wembley Stadium. Motorhead are off to places like Norwich Student Union and Portsmouth Guildhall, ending up in Hammersmith for the biggest gig of the tour. Eleven towns in 13 days, a bunch of ageing rock stars living and sleeping on the same bus. I never tried not doing it, you know, not for 40 years or so. I don't remember what it's like not being in Motorhead, actually. I mean, I know intellectually that I wasn't in Motorhead once, but I don't remember what it felt like. Yeah. 
The guitarist Phil Campbell first met Lemmy when Phil was a 12-year-old fan. Excellent guitar player. He's a great guy. I mean, I know him so well. I mean, I've seen more of him than his family have, you know, for the past 19 years. He's been with me 19 years, you know, which is a long time. How old are you? 24. See what I mean? <laughs> when you were five, you was playing with me, right? <laughs> it's a long time. The drummer, Mickey D, is the newcomer. At the age of 40, he's only been with the band 11 years. Mickey D is a complete egomaniac, which is great because he's in the right business for it, you know. And uh, he's the best drummer I've ever played with, and I've played with a few. Motorhead have always chosen to be a live working band, spending seven months on the road and two months recording every year. Do you ever get tired? Yeah. <laughs> so how do you keep going? Uh, you know, dogged idiocy, you know, like... Let's face it, I'm not qualified for anything else. I'm not suddenly going to quit and be a brain surgeon, do you know what I mean? And I, I, I want to keep it going, you know, that's it. I love what I'm doing. I'm lucky I got to do a job that I like, you know. Most people get to do a job they hate every day, you know. And if you like it too, it's a bonus. But I'm not doing it for you, I'm doing it for me, you know. Complete selfish, freaking, you know, hedonist son of a bitch, that's me. Hello and welcome to another edition of Book at Bedtime. I don't seem to have a book, but I'm sure I'll get one because it's bedtime. Good night. Nice. Don't let the fucking bed bugs bite. What? <laughs> Madam, how dare you? Good night, Lemmy. Good night, dear. Thirty years on the road and still every inch a rock god, right down to his tight black pants. By Wolverhampton Civic Hall, Motorhead are absolutely rocking. Motorhead were the first band who could lay claim to being popular with both punk and hard rock audiences. They were only at the top for a brief period in the early 80s, but Lemmy's total commitment to the music and lifestyle has never waned. It's just a great band, you know. And a good rock and roll band is really hard to find, actually. I mean, there's a lot of people who say they're rock and roll. I mean, they say fucking Britney Spears is rock these days. Um, let me assure you, and I speak from a wealth of experience, she isn't. And she's putting on a bit of weight now. Have you noticed that? For porky little fucker. Probably yeah. isn't. Probably isn't getting laid much anymore. Just lying around eating chocolates and watching TV all day, you know, hoping for Justin to call. You know? I don't think he's going to. Do you like your women slim? Yeah, who likes fat women? Some blokes. Yeah, I know they do, don't they? I've, I've never been able to figure that out. Over the years, Motorhead have produced over 20 albums but they've fallen out with countless record companies, stubbornly refusing to change anything about themselves or their music. I think that's what people like about us more than the music, is the attitude, yeah. Because we never... We never gave up anything, you know. We never let them do anything to us. We never said, OK, yes, sir, you know. We never did that. We always said, fuck you, you know. And we're still saying it today, which is why we're so broke, you know. <laughs> True to their lawless attitude, the band are famous for spending as fast as they earn. Who said it was money that keeps the band going? I never did. Good. What is it that keeps the band going? 
the pure adrenaline of rock and roll. Motorhead are renowned for the hardcore of obsessives they call superfans, who give up their holidays to follow the band on tour around the world. Most of them. In the back, it's, I think, very good. And this, yeah, this one also, a Motorhead one. This one Motorhead, this one Motorhead. This means Motorhead also. This is Lemmy himself. This is Mickey D. And of course I have Phil also on the back. Yeah, I gave uh, most parts of my body to the band, really. Why? <laughs> because of I love them so much, really. Yeah, really. I mean, you could say it's a little weird being that fanatical about a band, but I don't feel it's... I mean, they could be political, couldn't they? You know, that would be awful with that much keenness, right? And they could be born-again Christians, couldn't they? You know... Collecting pictures of Jesus. <laughs> no, they're great people. I mean, I rely on them, you know, to tell me if we're doing it right. You know what I mean? Because they've been with Motorhead, some of them, since we started, you know. Their loyalty is rewarded with backstage passes and a dressing room all of their own. You know, we've been invited to their, their houses, yeah. yeah. Um, we stayed in social, haven't we? Apart exactly. From the yeah, which, shows, which is very nice. And uh, we're always treated as... Um, yeah. As, as, as friends, friends yeah, really. Yeah. You, you, you have privileged information in yes. mobile telephone numbers, home addresses, and that sort of thing. But you, uh, you know, you you appreciate that information and yeah. you guard it. Yeah. They wouldn't, so, they wouldn't yeah. do this for us, give us our own dressing room if they didn't appreciate us yeah. and like us. Yeah. If they didn't afford to see us, they wouldn't do this for us. Yeah. Yeah. But, but you know, this is what happened in America when Lemmy had his head stolen. Yeah. It was uh, a bad time for all of us because. Mm. Suddenly, somebody that gets backstage uh, has abused the, uh, the trust. The trust. And, uh, it, it, yeah, we all start to think, well, yeah. the hat was uh, stolen from backstage at a, a gig in, I think, San Francisco, San Francisco. yes, yeah. and was missing for some months and until I think somebody was having a, a party in a house and a Motorhead fan happened to be there and saw this hat proudly displayed. Yeah. So they yeah. stole it back. Again, yeah, it? So that's right. Word yeah. had been put out on the internet. So it was stolen <laughs> back and returned to its rightful head. Yeah. It makes you feel you're doing something right too, you know, for people to be that fascinated by it. And also, I've had people come up to me and say, a couple of years ago I was going to commit suicide and your music got me through it, you know, which is a wonderful thing, you know. Even one kid like that makes the whole thing worthwhile from day one, you know. And we woke up one kid out of a coma after a motorcycle crash. We did that about, th there was a, a, a fad for that in the 70s. We did about 20 tapes for kids and he was the only one that woke up, but even so, even him on his own is worth it as well, you know. So that's a good thing. Rock and roll's a very positive thing, you know, it's very denigrated now, but they can all fuck off, you know. We fed the world when the politicians wouldn't, didn't we? You know, we shamed them into feeding Ethiopia. You know, so fuck you, you know, politics. Fuck you, the new age, you know, new labor. Fuck all of you. Ah, it's a fiver. Ah, it's a fiver. After the gig, Lemmy and Mickey are more interested in drinking than being filmed. Nuts. Being filmed. Nuts. I need another girls for the road. Yeah. Cold, too. You guys want to try a little special brew? You want a special brew, baby? We've got some drink already. Well, oh. You see? Yeah, that's drunk on you, haven't yet, though. They've been sniffing it. I know, yeah. Circling around it, like. This is pure, nice tobacco instead of cigarettes. And soon you can't smoke anywhere, so this is, will be a very, very hot item in England. Note my word. It's uh, 2003. Within a couple of years, you guys were eating this like candy. Like that. You might laugh now. I get the last laugh. Two years we'll all be doing it. Let's come back to business. Here, here's a drink. I'm going to look how much we got in there. How much are you actually drinking? Come on. 
be looking. <laughs> no, I don't think I drink a lot, no. To, uh, I don't get staggered drunk and whatever like that. I just like the taste of cider. I don't drink hard liquor. I don't drink whiskey or vodka. Or, I used to drink two bottles of vodka a day in the mid-80s, but then I used to fight with Lemmy and... Uh, I, I can't even stand the smell of it now. I just like to drink cider and nice wines and margaritas. Come on then, cheers. Ah, she's sneaking the drink up there. Have a drink, kid. Put the camera in the back of the fucking seat and have a drink. Cabs here, let's no, fuck later. off. Enough filming, come on, let's go. Come on, come on, come on. Lemmy may like a drink or ten, but his favourite vice has always been women. Women have conquered me all my life, yeah. All they've got to do is say hi, in a certain way, and it's over, you know. Never mind all this macho fucking bullshit, you know. No, I mean, I love the music too, you know, but I had a guitar before I could play it because, you know, this guy brought a guitar to the school after the exams, wherever you get that week, you know, where you don't do nothing. And this kid showed up with the guitar and he was immediately surrounded by chicks, you know. And I thought, that, that's, that's the one for me, you know what I mean? Because I was like endlessly frustrated, bent double in agony, you know. And I took this kid, my mother had a guitar line, I took it to school and immediately surrounded by women, it worked like a charm, you know. I couldn't even play it, you know. I just had one. In, in those days, that was enough, you know. Lemmy's a self-confessed lap-dancing addict. I'm sick of guys pretending to be fucking surrogate women. I can't help being a guy, you know, I like things that guys like. Fuck off, you know. We like girls with tits. Sorry, you know. It's one of those things. I didn't ask for them to have tits either, but if they've got them, I'm going to look at them. Hey, too bad. The main thing you have to realise is it's not sordid, it's fun. Sex is the most fun you can have without laughing, all right? And if people had more sex, there'd be less people in church swearing to God to, you know, vilify the minorities, you know what I mean? And there'd be less people wanting to kill each other because they'd be getting fucked and it's a lot more fun than shooting people. Go away now. Lemmy claims to have slept with over 2,000 women. Has anyone ever done a kiss and tell on you? Yeah. A girl in the, what was it, Sunday People, I think it was. What? Said that I tied her to the bed and fucked her for 10 hours. And my solicitor wrote and said, we wish to complain most strongly about your article about let me kill Mr. She wasn't tied to the bed, she was hanging from the ceiling. As Motorhead make their way towards Manchester, old friends and hangers-on come along for the ride. Breakfast of champions. I found a red here in the wind. These days, not everyone on the tour is a drug taker. But when Lemmy started out in the 60s, the music scene revolved around drugs. He learned how to survive as a roadie for Jimi Hendrix. I did a lot of acid when I was working for Hendrix. I mean, everybody was doing acid. Everybody I knew was doing acid, just about. How much were you doing? Oh, 
Well, they, they said it didn't work twice. You know, if you did it two days, it wouldn't work the second day. But we found out if you doubled the dose, it did, you know. <laughs> so by the time we'd finished the tour, we were doing it in handfuls, like fucking dolly mixes, you know. <clears throat> and it was all right if you could handle it, and if you couldn't, it wasn't, you know, like everything else. Everybody took drugs. I, I mean, you can't probably imagine that now, but it was really easy to imagine then. You know. Because it, it was very hedonistic, I suppose. But everybody I knew took drugs. Lemmy is famous for his love of speed. He even named the band Motorhead, American slang for a speed freak. I had such a good time taking speed, you would not believe it. If I could describe it, you would not believe it. And acid too was a great thing, you know. I don't care how the fuck they dress it up now, it's evil and but, you know, da, 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 people have gone nuts. Of course they have. People have gone nuts who've never taken acid. You know, people went nuts because of the First World War. You know, people went nuts because of whatever. But like acid made me a better person, you know. And speed? No, speed's functional. Speed just gets you there on time, you know. There were times when Lemmy took so much acid he almost didn't make it on stage. Oh, sorry, you're I had to stick her boots on the back of the stage and push us up, so I arrived on stage and the guy hung my bass on me. I said, OK, which way is the audience, man? <laughs> and he went, that way. And I said, how far? <laughs> and he said, 20 paces, so I took 10 paces. I said, OK, hit it. Drugs have been a big part of Lemmy's life, and he's seen plenty of casualties, but he's always been anti-heroin. By the time you get to 57, you know a lot of people who've died, right? I mean, my entire generation got stopped dead in its tracks by heroin, and now this generation's about to be stopped as well, you know. Kurt Cobain, you know. And now this new mob, I mean, it's fashionable again, you know. Fucking dying in agony is fashionable, a good deal. Well thought out approach, boys. And they never seem to see that's so stupid people are, you know. There's dead bodies stretching all the way back to 1920, you know, with heroin. And before that, and people still think they can beat it. Well, they got all them other guys, but it won't get me, you know. Arrogant young motherfucker, it will get you, you know. How did it affect you to see your friends die? Well, my girlfriend died, you know, and it's so. Uh, that was a bit rough. But it was rougher on her, right? It was a shame, you know, she was pretty as a picture, 19 years old. Gone. How long ago was that? 73, I'm kind of over it. But you'll never get over it, you know. It's like one of those things. And this guy once, a friend of mine called Preston Dave, which was not his real name, you know what I mean? Uh, he was a junkie and he was like shaky, hurting. So we all clubbed together and gave him a couple of pounds each and he went up to Piccadilly which was, at that time, the heroin centre, you know, and he got half a gram of smack and he came back. And we were in the Wimpy Bar in Earl's Court and he went in the toilet and shut it up and he came out backwards and his face was black. Somebody sold him rat poison. It killed him right there. Have you ever touched heroin? No, that's uh, one thing. I'm remarkably opiate-free. <laughs> I think I'm all done with talking about drugs. You know the main thing in your life? What? Sense of humour. Lose that, you're done. 
You might as well blow your fucking breath. Motorhead are like an extended family. They travel with a crew of 14. Most of them have been with the band for years. Lemmy's the only one who doesn't have a partner. His rules on tour are always the same. We don't take wives on tour. You can come out for a few days, but that's it. You don't, you... People who take their wives on tour, why? You don't take your wife to work if you're a plumber, dear. You don't take her down to the factory and she sits there knitting all day while you fucking do a capstan blade. It doesn't work like that. You're not supposed to be with somebody all the time. You know, it's too fucking precious. Because then it's two guys who are in the band and one guy's with his wife. Right? And then it's no longer the band. It's two of you and the other fellow who isn't talking to you anymore because she's demanding all his attention. Or he feels he should give her all his attention, or whichever it is. It's not. The band, the band has to be tight, you know. The band has to, because you're going to come across enough shit that you have to deal with without having the wife as, wives along as well, right? There's enough distractions already, you know. How do you spell cock? C-O-C-K. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's C-K. Backstage, Mickey's distracted by a game of Russian roulette, which gives you an electric shock. <coughs> stick a cock in there. No one's going to stick their cocks in my game. Oh, oh my. We can fucking wash it up there. Let's do that drunk, see if... if who oh. dare? Who dare stick a fucking cock in this one? Oh, if you're drunk, it's not too bad. Oh, oh not well, that's the whole thing, isn't it? Can your cock fit in there? No, but you can squish yeah, it in, maybe. I'm not going to do it, no. I'm not going to stick my cock into an electric machine. Why? Well, I don't know. Colour me nutty. But... Can't be crazy. Me and Phil Cameron, can't we, had a, we had a cock slamming competition once. We slammed our, our knobs in the refrigerator. How, how smart is that? I don't That's know. fucking jackass. Are you serious? That's, That's an idiot. Yeah, yeah. That was we in were, Nottingham. We were wasted out of our minds and we were, come on then. And he started off. He yeah, started he off. Started. He's always he a fucking Dave instigator Thomas. or that kind Dave of. Thomas slammed the fridge door and Oh, yeah. Tell, yeah. Me, tell, me that, tell me exactly what you did. Well, you just put your knob in the refrigerator door and then you slam it as hard Biggest. as you dare. Yeah. And then keep doing it. <laughs> slam it yeah. in the <laughs> Phil, because he's, he must be completely fucking numb from total fucking... <laughs> I couldn't believe what he was doing. <laughs> Lemmy's had many girlfriends, but he's always avoided long-term relationships. The crew, really, yeah. The crew and the band of my family, yeah. To an outsider, Lemmy appears to be the father figure. No, 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 you misunderstand that completely. No, 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 no. I'm not Phil's father. If I was Phil's father, I'd be nuts by now. If I was, if I was Mickey's father, I'd probably have strangled him. <laughs> have strangled him. I'm not any of their fathers, no. I'm their older brother, perhaps, he would say, you know, some like or better still, older, wicked uncle, you know, some like that. If Lemmy's the wicked uncle, Vito, the drum tech, is the goofy nephew. He's one of the more eccentric personalities of the Motorhead clan. V. He's very, very strange, very special guy. It's the best drum tech I ever had. Everything is absolutely perfect. And uh, that's what also causes a problem when you have a neat freak. When he first started uh, working for me, he actually were polishing my drums while I'm playing. I mean, I had to kick him out of my way when, when I'm playing like that. He's funny. I mean, he is a classic. He's a nutcase. His uncle owns a strip joint in LA called Crazy Girls, right? His uncle Gino. And every time I go in there, he says, Hey, is that fucking stupid nephew of mine still working for you? Hey, Lem. What did I do? What did I do? Oh, oh, shh. What in the. Uh, oh, no, not this. You're kidding. Try it. Show up, see? And there's this one, too. Yeah, I like it. Like That's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you get yeah. them? There's a shop for them. Three doors up, four doors up. You should go in there. Oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry about that. I didn't, don't worry. Sorry, head. 
Bonding right there. Enough bonding, piss off, guys. Some of the closest we get to male bonding, exactly. physically. You become more than just a team, it becomes personal, you know. I mean, you don't have to screw somebody to be like with them, you know. I mean, you can be with somebody like deeper than you'd ever be with your wife or your husband, you know, because you work with them for a while and you click into something, and nobody can define that either. It's like that electric spark when you meet somebody you really fancy, it's the same sort of thing. You know, it's the same fulfillment thing about it. And it's a great thing, and you can't analyze it. And I love it because of that. Right. The band play three gigs in a row and then have a day off when they get to Bristol. Have a day off, see the kids and walk my dog, my little dog. I might bring my dog to the gig actually, Ozzy. Is he called Ozzy? Yeah, because he shits himself all the time. Like, uh, no, he's beautiful. But I might do that. So that's the that's the sort of plan for tomorrow. Are you looking forward to seeing your family? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. But I probably won't see much of them. They'll probably send me down Tesco's or something like that. Lemmy never really knew his father. He was a vicar who walked out on Lemmy and his mother when Lemmy was just three months old. Oh, he's in. He didn't see him again until he was 25 and living in London. I met him at uh, Dino's Pizza, I think it was, in Old Square Road. An auspicious, you know, venue, don't you think? And he was this little rat guy with glasses, you know. And he started going on about how guilty he felt. I said, look, you know, I said, I'm in a rock and roll band. I know, because he was apparently a really good pianist, right? But he never took it up. And I said, I'm in a rock and roll band. If you really feel bad about it, give me a grand. I can buy some equipment because I'd blow me out, you know, which was true. And I said, then you can forget it. It'll all be fair play and, you know, bibbidi bobbidi boo again. And he said, oh, I couldn't do that. He said, the music business is so uncertain. You know, it's his terms again, you know what I mean? He said, I was thinking I would train you to be a commercial traveller, you know, and uh, then you can make a lit. I said, you're lucky the fucking pizza hasn't arrived yet because you've been wearing it, you know what I mean? It'd be your new hat, like. And I just walked out, you know. It was nothing, you know, he didn't mean anything. He didn't have my interests at heart at all. You know, it was just his, his guilt he wanted to calm, you know. So I didn't do him that favour, I'm afraid. Another example of my fuck you you know. <laughs> the experience has had a profound effect on Lemmy's life. There's no divine being who's all-powerful, else it wouldn't be this fucked up, would it? You know, that was one of the first reactions I had to um, the church, you know, because my father was a vicar, you know. And, like, I thought to myself, well, how... If he was a vicar in touch with God, you know, how come him and my mother are so desperately unhappy that they're to break up, you know? And, like, how is it that the Catholic Church says I have to be declared illegitimate for it to marry a Catholic man, my stepfather, you know? I mean, how could the Church do that if they're in touch with God, you know? So fuck God and fuck the devil and fuck the Church, too, you know? I'm, I'm responsible for my actions. I don't need to hide behind nothing, you know? Devil didn't make me do it, I did it. Whatever I did. Oh, 
Lemmy has consciously avoided commitment to anything but his band all his life. Why is it about commitment? That's, that's the thing the church put on you in the like, 14th century, you know. That's fucking primitive commitment. You want to face the same face over the fucking conflicts for the rest of your life? I don't. That's boring, you know. That's tedious, especially when the figure starts to go and the teeth start to fall out and shit, you know. I mean, and the, the other way, looking at me over the conflicts for the rest of her life, you know, ain't no fun either. You know, variety is the spice of life, I say. Lemmy has two children that he knows of, but his attitude to fatherhood is unconventional. I never met the first one because he was adopted at birth. She was 15, very bad news in those days. You know, oh no, they had sex. <sighs> Shit. His mother went and found him about three years ago. And she's a social worker now, right? She wears them paisley smock things, you know, she's kind of bohemian looking. And she went up there and he was adopted by an older couple, you know, so it's like living with your grandparents all your life. So he said, she said he put his head in his hands when she told him she was his mother. She said he shouldn't got the heart to tell him who his father was like. <laughs> Probably would have been out on the, you know. So that takes care of that question, I suppose. Yeah. He might be delighted. Hmm? He might be delighted. He might not be too, and it's not worth my satisfaction at meeting my son, you know, to ruin his fucking life, you know. Lemmy met his second son by accident when he bumped into an ex-girlfriend. The boy was already six years old. This little blonde kid comes in and goes, you're my daddy, you know. And he was right, you know, as he grew older, the features became more similar. Do you wish you'd been there for him as a dad? No, I don't, you know, I don't think it's that important. And he's a great boy, you know, and I'm very proud of him. But like, I didn't feel I owed him anything. You know, I mean, he was brought up by his mum, so was I. So, you know, as far as I'm concerned, that's as good of a start in life as you can have for anybody, you know. See, he's a fine young man, you know, he makes a great contribution to the music scene because he plays wonderfully well, much better than me. And he was an accident while we was having fun. I can't think of a better testament to the having fun this thing of it than that, you know. Ten days into the tour, in Manchester, Motorhead are playing to the biggest crowd so far. In the dressing room, the band feel it hasn't gone as well as they'd hoped. Too fast. We're doing that it, when we. Uh, That's right, right. No, wrong, boys? no, we. I can't even make. What song was fast? Yeah. The, you better run, start to go fast. Yeah, that again. was fast. The rest of it was great. Was it? Sorry about that, chap. All for one, and all for me. Ha <laughs> ha. See you later. Oh, sorry, that was good. Stefan. I need to talk to Salami. What? Salami. Baloney. How's the show, Mickey? Better than yesterday. Good crowd? <laughs> no, really shitty crowd. I thought they sucked, but I, get, I don't know why. They were very quiet. I'm going to look in ten years' time. No, I've still I've got more wrinkles. I look like I've got mumps. <laughs> should never have paid 75 quid for that, should I? To their surprise, the venue staff are insisting the band leave on time. Well, they don't only kick us out of a venue. Uh, not this quickly. What a dump! I want to sign the visitors' book. Piss off! We're never going to play this. Yeah, we're playing Liverpool next time. Yeah, yeah, we we'll rip it off. Rip it out of the fucking book. Did we sign one here? No, but I want to sign it before I leave. But they want us to. No, but I'm going to insist. Tell them what I think of this place. Yeah, yeah of course. Glad to this. be leaving here because it smells of shit. We never want to play it again. What a dump! Yeah. It was lame. You've always been lame, and we're going to play in Liverpool from now on. Bollocks to you. 
you know, we're making them a lot of money here. And then when we're done playing, the attitude changed like that. And we're not taking that shit, trust me. He's seen us for the last time. He's off. Ball next to him, yeah. <laughs> Lemmy ignores the fuss. Whenever he can on tour, he likes to find his own space and disappears off to read P.G. Woodhouse on the bus. I was always kind of independent anyway. I was an only child and I lived on my own, you know, up on the farm. There's no kids up there, you know, I used to go out with the dogs, you know. Me. If you don't mind being alone, it's a great gift, you know. There's so many people now who can't stand to be on their own, you know. Like, silence worries people. And they can't read either to, to alleviate it. If the TV breaks down, they're fucked. The world goes away from them, you know. Lemmy only sleeps four hours a night. Reading into the early hours, he mentally prepares himself for the final gig. Hammersmith, the place where Motorhead made their name. One of these days, I'm going to get hold this camera and fucking ram it down your fucking throat. Okay. <laughs> Ground floor? Yes, I know. Checking out of hotels is never simple for Motorhead. Every time we check out of a hotel, it's the same. What happens? Dirty gets loaded, doesn't know he's ordered a hamburger and then uh, don't want to pay for it. So you're not paying for your sandwich you had last night? I didn't have a sandwich. And uh, hey. there's a movie as well? A what? A movie. Did you watch a film? No, movie? no movie. Oh, yes, you I did. didn't watch no movie. Yes, you did. I didn't watch a movie. That will be 22.90. 22.90 now? <laughs> what? Unbelievable. There's a bullshitter in here somewhere. <laughs> Where's Freddy? Tonight it's Hammersmith, the final and biggest gig of the UK tour. Mornings are never the best time for Lemmy. Oh, fuck off, Go away, just go Who wants to be 58, actually? <coughs> Do you? Fucked if I ever wanted to be 58. But you get stuck with it, you know. So you develop this shield against being 58, which says, no, you're 25. I dye my hair, you know. Because I look like fucking Willie Nelson if I don't, you know. And who wants to do that? My hair is not having a good day already. I just meant to be cheerful this morning. It's you know. two o'clock in the afternoon. No, it's not. It's impossible. It is. How much sleep did you get, Demi? I didn't get any. Do you ever have breakfast? Huh? Eh? Do you ever have breakfast? What do you mean have for breakfast? I'm having breakfast. Jack Daniels and Coke. And a fag. And a fag. Good. Put in jacket on. You must be psychotic. <laughs> Bye, Lemmy. I'll uh, see you later. See ya. <laughs> He's got a, a persona that people are kind of, you know, that's Lem. Uh, he's a very gentle bloke, he's well read, he's intelligent, you know. Um, I feel for him because he's got a hard job to do. You know, he's got to keep up this this lem image all the time. It's harder for him to change, make some changes sometimes. But I kind of personally think that it's 2003 right now and not 1975, you know. And, and the business is very different today than it was just 10 years ago. So I guess he's having a harder time changing sometimes. and adjusting to certain things which can cause a problem but most of the time it's actually good you know
Motorhead's first live album, No Sleep Till Hammersmith, was recorded here and went straight to number one. 20 years later, it's like coming home. I've had a good time. I've had a good time out of rock and roll, and rock and roll's had a good time out of me, as I say. I was always lucky. I had this talent I could play. I mean, I, I know, you know, Stravinsky, but like, I mean, I could play. And I got to do a job I like, you know. And uh, I used to work in a factory making parts for washing machines in Wales, you know. And I know how much, I can remember how much I hated it now, and it was like 30 years ago, 35 years ago, 40 years ago. And like, you think, imagine if I've been doing that job ever since, yeah? I'd be fucking nuts by now. Do you think he'll ever stop? Oh, he'll stop eventually, yeah. I mean, but they'll have to bury him then. Are you surprised how healthy you are, considering all these years of... I, I don't think I'm surprised. Grateful is the word you want, you know. It's an accident of whatever, genetics or something, you know, luck, dumb luck is what it is. When did you last go to the doctor? Uh, just before I came out here, because you have to, you know, for tours and insurance. And, and what did, did he say? What did he say? Oh, my liver's fine, my lungs are fine, low cholesterol. Ha ha, you know, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Motorhead have become the living embodiment of rock and roll, and Lemmy the ultimate icon for leather clad rockers. Lemmy doesn't care what anyone thinks about him or his music. He's chosen his life and genuinely seems to be loving every minute of it. I don't need to look at the future. You know, I've always been a very you are here now person. You know. You're only clinging on to life by the skin of your teeth anyway. You know. Just be lucky as long as you can. That's all there is. You know, you, maybe you're going to go tomorrow. I don't fucking know. And there's nothing you can plan for. The UK tour is almost over. Next stop, Germany. Still playing the same music, still wearing the same pants. It looks like nothing can stop Lemmy or Motorhead from living fast and dying old. Does death scare you? Nah. You have a sense of humour, you know. At the funeral, I'm going to have them play like the Laurel and Hardy theme, you know. Dun, 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 dun. That'd be funny. How would you like to be remembered? As an honest man. As an honourable man. But that's out of the question, you know. <laughs>